Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. This is Brian Mulligan from the Gasoline Volunteer Fire Department. You're listening to SA Matters Radio Show with Dr. Rich Gasoline. The SA Matters mission is simple. They want to help us see the bad things coming. It's time to avoid bad outcomes. Hello and welcome to episode 56 of the Situation Awareness Matters radio show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence environments. The SA Matters mission is simple, to help you see the bad things coming and time to avoid bad outcomes. In this episode, we're going to explore the neuroscience behind what causes your gut feeling, intuition, and why you might want to pay attention to it. It's amazing how many articles and videos I've watched lately in which they're talking about the decision making based on gut feel. It's also disheartening as to how many first responders I've interviewed who have admitted to me that they have dismissed their gut feeling and proceeded to do things that resulted in bad outcomes. So we're going to spend some time exploring the gut feel. To understand how you can benefit from intuition, we must first lay a foundation of where the knowledge comes from that forms intuition. Your brain is constantly assessing and gathering information, some of which you do with conscious awareness, and some is gathered completely unintentionally. The gathered information is stored as patterns of information inside the brain. This information starts in short-term memory and can then be forgotten or sent on a highway to your longer-term memory. How exactly this happens is a complex process beyond the scope of this podcast. Once information reaches its long-term memory destination, there are a number of factors that influence your ability to recall that information. Recency, familiarity, emotional connection to the information, routines, and repetition, to name a few. Some information is recalled consciously, which is to say you have complete awareness of the information. An example would be, say, including your home address or names and faces of loved ones or where you were when a specific tragic event occurred, etc. Other information is not so easy to recall into conscious awareness. Simply because you cannot recall it doesn't mean necessarily however, that it's been forgotten. Occasionally, you'll have something happen or see something or hear something that will cause a memory of a long time ago to flood back into consciousness. This is an example of tacit knowledge, the knowledge that resides outside of everyday awareness. Another form of this tacit knowledge is the knowledge that never comes into conscious awareness, but you nonetheless know it. Take, for example, driving a car. Most experienced drivers are able to operate a vehicle at highway speeds without carrying or while carrying on a conversation without thinking about the act of driving. Have you ever been driving somewhere and arrived at your destination and realized that you don't remember the drive? You really weren't paying attention to the drive, perhaps because you were talking to someone or singing along with a song on the radio or you were deep in thought. How were you able to safely operate the vehicle? Tacit knowledge. You're driving the vehicle with a reliance on stored information from past driving experiences and past training and past video games you've played and past movies that you've watched. 
all that subconscious tacit knowledge allows you to pay attention to other things and depend on your intuition to guide you down the highway. It seems a little scary to think about driving this way, but we do it without even realizing it. The reliance on tacit knowledge in driving is what gets some young drivers into trouble. They watch parents and other experienced drivers and are lulled into believing that they can operate a vehicle just as easily because the expert driver makes it look so easy. The young driver doesn't have the benefit of the stored tacit knowledge, the lifetime of experience of driving. Yet they continue to talk with the passengers or talk on their cell phone or text or sing along with the radio, engage deep in thought and lose track of the fact that they're driving a vehicle at highway speeds. Absent a store of tacit knowledge, the young driver doesn't benefit from intuition. Because they lack the experience, driving is a conscious act for them, and their brain cannot give its attention to two conscious tasks simultaneously, causing the young driver perhaps to have a near miss or an accident. Intuition is your early warning system. Because your brain is constantly processing and storing information, it's also constantly comparing current experiences to past experiences. Perhaps stated another way, the brain is constantly comparing patterns of current environmental cues to stored patterns of previous experiences. The pattern matches are what provide you with the intuition, or as it is sometimes framed, knowing without knowing how you know. There are many, many lessons stored inside your brain. There are also genetic coding based on experiences of previous generations, dating all the way back to the cave-dwelling ancestors. Those experiences of long ago are sometimes termed instinct. All creatures possess instinct, and you do too. Intuition can provide you with early warnings, often in the form of gut feelings, hair standing up on the back of your neck, or the feelings of impending danger or doom, or little voices inside of your head talking to you and saying things like, this isn't right, you shouldn't be here. Ignoring your intuition. It can be difficult to trust your intuition and make decisions based on feelings. As modern day humans, we're trained to depend a lot on facts and data as the foundation for our good decision making. The internet, providing access to nearly unlimited amounts of facts and data, has made it easy for us to validate decisions and rely on rational instead of intuitive decision processes. Under stress, the brain is gathering and processing many facts, much of which is happening outside of your awareness. These facts, formed into patterns, are then sent to higher brain regions and compared to past experiences. When you get the gut feeling, you're benefiting from intuition. You're benefiting from a pattern match. However, if you make a decision purely on intuition or gut feel, and someone asks you for the proof and the evidence, you may not be able to produce it. Remember, intuition and pattern matching happens outside of conscious awareness. So you may find yourself being unable to articulate why you feel the way you did, but nonetheless sensed something was wrong. For many responders, this leap of faith is simply too great. So sadly, some dismiss their intuition and trudge onward into danger. If you've listened to past episodes of this SA Matters radio show, You'll hear interviews where responders fully admit dismissing their intuition and subsequently finding themselves in a very bad place, maybe even coming close to death. Self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is a fancy way of saying the amount of confidence you have in yourself, your unwavering confidence in yourself. 
to make split-second decisions rooted in strong situation awareness, you need to trust your gut feeling. If your warning bells are going off, giving you the feeling that something isn't right, you need to get out of that situation. If you're the commander and your warning bells are going off and something says that things are not right, you need to order your personnel out of that situation. It can be difficult to trust your gut, especially when you're in the heat of a high-risk operation and the proof and evidence is not screaming out at you. If you make a decision to retreat based on intuition, you may suffer some embarrassment or criticism if you're not able to articulate exactly why you made the decision. Before I close this episode, I want to take a moment to thank the departments and organizations that have recently hosted Situational Awareness Matters Tour Stops. Your efforts to bring the situational awareness and decision-making classes to your region is greatly appreciated. The Indiana Department of Homeland Security and the Greenfield Fire Department for hosting the week-long Company Officer Development Institute and a Situational Awareness Program. Joint Base Lewis McCord for hosting four days of situational awareness training for firefighters and military personnel. The Buckley Fire Department Recruit Academy class for allowing me to come in and spend some time with the Recruit Academy. The Alabama Fire College and the 1st Battalion of Shelby County for hosting a Firefighter Safety Mistakes and Best Practices program. Upcoming tour stops that you may be interested in knowing about or possibly want to attend, I will be at the Frisco Fire Department in Texas, May 27 and 28, the Lodi Fire Department in California on June 1, the Illinois Fire College in Champaign on June 4 to 7, the Montana Joint Conference between Chiefs and Firefighters in Ennis, Montana on June 10 and 11, the Prince Albert Fire Department in Saskatchewan on June 16, the South Dakota Firefighters Association Conference on June 18 and 19, the Spokane Fire Department in Washington on June 22nd, and the Flathead County EMS in Kalispell, Idaho on June 26 and 27. If you're interested in attending an upcoming SA Matters tour stop, just head over to the SA Matters website and click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage. It says Upcoming Events. Here's hoping there will be a tour stop near you and we'll get a chance to meet up. If you're not a member of the SA Matters community of learners, please consider joining. There are over 5,000 members sharing ideas on how to improve situational awareness and decision making under stress. Membership is free, and you can receive a special report when you sign up now that I've created just for the new members called 25 Best Practices for Improving First Responder Safety. It's short and sweet. It won't take you more than 10 minutes to read through it, but there, there are some pretty good uh, best practices in there for you. If you're not a member, head over to the SA Matters website, click on the red box on the right side that says Free Membership, and sign up. As a reminder, every episode of the SA Matters radio show has a corresponding show notes page on the SA Matters website. The most recent episodes scroll on the front of the homepage. For the older episodes, you just go to samatters.com forward slash and then enter in the episode number, um, which I also always mention at the beginning of the show. So for, if, if, for example, you wanted to access episode 50 you would bring up a browser put www.samatters.com forward slash 50 and that'll take you to the page it contains the link to that episode you can play it there and there's some show notes and depending on what guest i have some video some audio pictures things like that you can also subscribe on itunes and stitcher radio uh, and I'll mention more about that in just a second. If you want to get connected with me on social media, you can follow at Rich Gassaway or at SA Matters on Twitter. Uh, in those feeds, I just share information about situational awareness and decision making and occasionally some things about my personal life, my family, and my travels. So thanks to the Twitter community, we're almost at the 15,000 follower mark. So thanks for all those folks for supporting my mission. You can also get connected with me on Facebook by liking the SA Matters page. And on LinkedIn, you can search for me, search Rich Gassaway. And there are about 8,000 
connected with me on Facebook and LinkedIn. Well, that's it. Episode 56 is complete. I'd like to thank our sponsor again, Midwest Fire, and thank you to our listeners for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I sincerely appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. If you have experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to be interviewed on this show, visit the SA Matters website and click on the Contact Us link. And I'll thank you in advance for sharing your lessons learned so that others may live. If you like the show, please go to iTunes and Stitcher Radio and search for SA Matters Radio, SA Matters Radio, and subscribe to the podcast and leave your feedback. If you like the show, I'd really appreciate you giving it a five-star review as well. Not only does that motivate me, but it'll help others to find the show uh, and, and benefit from the content from all the great guests that have uh, blessed us with being part of, this, part of the show. If you're inspired and you want to learn more about situational awareness, consider becoming a member. It's that red box on the right side of the homepage, and it's completely free. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com.